When I started out composing, I could not write a note down unless I'd actually drawn out the shape on the paper, very much really like uh, the Seattle Library, that beautiful diagram, um, actually looked quite like one of my early scores. Um, it wasn't the score you played from, it was just for me, it was my uh, road map, if you like. And um, it often actually could be quite sort of rough and ready in places, but unless I could see that there was going to be this great big section of very kind of dark, muddy textured music with a, perhaps a, a flash of light from a trumpet in the middle of it or whatever, followed by something completely different, followed by something else. I couldn't sort of begin, and it was almost as if the sound kind of swum up from that uh, diagram, in, in a way, um, and then materialised uh, to become notes and, and, and things that people could sing and, and play. The building blocks thing, um, I think that's one that uh, all composition students tend to focus on. Where do you get your notes from? How did you get those? You know, what system do you use? It's um, actually, we're so hung up on pitch, I think, as composers. I, I, I sort of always tell people, you know, there is the rhythmic element as well, which is incredibly important. And I don't just mean in a, you know, if you're writing a sort of minimal type phase piece, um, the actual rhythmic identity of a particular musical idea um, gives it its strength. So we, we need to sort of concentrate on that as well. At the moment, I think, what I've been most interested in, and this is now I'm coming round to the, the piece I'm going to play, is actually a, a much, much more flexible structure. And also, um, something that really does genuinely kind of uh, move through a space and um, literally, in this particular case, but even if it were not to be done literally, you would hear that the music does, in fact, travel. Um, the piece I'd like to talk about a little bit is um, a piece called Concerto for Violin with Singer and Three Ensembles. Um, this piece started out um, as a collection of other pieces. Okay, so again, the, the structure is incredibly loose. It was actually, well, there were th four pieces I had thought of using in the event. I actually only used uh, three of them and then wrote some other material because it, it didn't work in my original format. They are completely different ensembles. Um, but the idea was that the violinist, the concerto line, will actually have the same music throughout, or mostly throughout. Um, I, but it would be cut about, chopped up. And I literally did that. Um, I sort of took a bit and then stopped it there and moved it somewhere else in the piece uh, and so on. It, uh, yes, cut and chopped about is how I sort of think of my um, processes in that particular piece. And what would happen is that the material would be, have a completely different colour, a bit like Bert Whistle's processions around the little Italian town, uh, when it came to a different ensemble. Um, the ensembles, the first group is um, quite jangly things, piano, electric keyboard, very, very bright metallic percussions sort of vibraphone, crotales and things like that. Um, piano, oh, as I mentioned that, but very uh, sort of... Um, What's like the electronic sounds? Um, in fact, there are a lot of electronics in the piece as well. Um, and so it was a very sort of um, uh, made-up artificial world, if you like. That's one, one of the pieces. A second piece, which had the same violin music but over the top in a different way, was the harpsichord, recorder, guitar and cello. So a kind of, um, sort of early music sound, really, almost. Uh, as far away as uh, I thought you could get from the first group. And some of the new material, this, uh, which I wrote, was just for strings. Very, very simple, very tonal, very block chords, um, some quarter note tonality, but it's still basic triads. And then there was um, a piece for solo violin with singer, which was where Laurie Lixenberg came in. So there were four completely different sorts of ensembles. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.